Al-Bara ibn Azib said that once we attended the janazah of somebody and we followed the grave up until the qabr and the qabr had not yet been dug. So all of us sat down with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and somebody began to dig the qabr. Now that's going to take a while. So Al-Bara ibn Azib said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam looked up to the heavens and then he looked down to the earth. He looked up to the heavens, he looked down to the earth, and then a third time he looked up to the heavens, and then he looked down to the earth. Then he said, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhab al qabr. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the adhab of qabr. Then he began the hadith. When the Muslim is about to enter the next world and leave this dunya, the malakul maut comes, and every single soul has a specific malakul maut assigned to it. Because Allah says in the Quran, then the malakul maut that has been assigned to you will take your soul. So the malakul maut comes and sits at his head. Then the angels of the heavens come down as if their faces are suns, bright. And they have with them the shrouds of Jannah and the perfumes of Jannah. When the person is about to pass away, Allah sends a delegation of angels just for him. This delegation varies from person to person. The one who prays the Hajjud and was Abid and Zahid is not like the one who barely just prayed the five salawat and just about made it. Everyone has a daraja from where they go. The one who is righteous will get a more noble delegation and larger delegation and they will sit as far as the eye can see. You are the center of attention and you are surrounded by millions and all of them, they are bringing peace and comfort with their presence. Their faces are shining bright. You can smell the fragrances of Jannah. Then the angel of death will say, أَيَّتُهَا النَّسْهُ الْمُطْمَئِنَّ أَخْرِجِي إِلَى مَغْفِرَةِ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِضْوَانِ O oh, pure and peaceful soul, now is the time to exit. He is taking it in such a gentle manner. He is inviting the soul, come, come out now. You beautiful soul, you pure soul, come out. And I welcome you to Allah's maghfirah and Allah's pleasure. So the Prophet wasallam said, his soul will exit and just go out. His soul will flow out like water flows out from a jug. This is how the soul will exit and it will then reach the angel of death and the angels around it. And the Prophet ﷺ said, they will not allow the soul even one second to be unattended. They will take it up to the heavens immediately. Interesting by the way, the body we shroud it, but the soul, the angel shroud. And the angels will wrap it in the delicate cloths of Jannah. And they will put the perfumes of Jannah on it. And every time they were going up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will pass by other angels. And the angels will say, who is this beautiful soul? And the angels will respond, this person is Fulan ibn Fulan. And they'll mention him by the best names that the people of earth remembered him by. Anybody who said, oh, you're an honest person. The angels will say, this is Fulan ibn Fulan, the honest person the best descriptions that the people gave of him the angels will give as they're going upwards and this also shows us another fact that we all know and that is that the heavens are chock full or jam-packed of angels and those angels don't know who this soul is so they'll say who is this and they will recognize this soul to be a beautiful soul how so because of the angels of mercy and the angels that have the perfume of Jannah and the kafan of Jannah so the other angels will recognize oh this is a good person so they'll say who is this good person and so the entourage will say this is so and so the son of so and so and then they will mention him with all of the beautiful names that he was mentioned with in this world and then they reach the highest heavens the doors of the heavens heavens are opened up for him and they go higher and higher until they get to the highest heavens the seventh heaven then it will be said who will say this in other reports Allah will say write his name in the register of Illiyin. And Illiyin is the name of a register for the righteous people. It is mentioned in the Quran. And it means the highest register. That is where the highest book is written for the righteous people. And then Allah will say, return my servant to this world. 
because I created them from it and I shall return them to it and then I shall bring them back from it one other time. And so his ruh will be returned to his jasad. And then their souls reunite with their bodies. Now obviously the reuniting with the body, it is not the reuniting of this world, nor is it the reuniting of the akhirah. It is a completely different reuniting which we do not know is beyond our ilm. In the alimul barzakh, not necessarily in our dunya, in a different dimension. Then two angels will come and they will ask him the questions. This is munkar and naki. The names do not occur in this hadith, but in other hadith they occur. And they ask him, Mar Rabbuk? He says, Allah. They say, Ma Dinuk? He says, Islam. They say, who was this man that was sent amongst you? And when they say this man, then the person will automatically understand the Prophet Wasallam. He will say, Rasulullah. He is the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When he says this, they will say to him, how do you know all of these answers? He will say, I read the book of Allah, I believed in it, and I affirmed it to be true. Then a voice will call from the heavens, Ansaddaq, he has spoken the truth. فَأَفْرِشُوهُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَأَلْبِسُوهُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَأَرَوْهُ مَنْزِلَهُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ so once again, Allah will decree. He has spoken the truth. So give him the clothes of Jannah and give him the couches of Jannah and show him his place in Jannah. There's no food, there's no drink because it is barzakh. But there is comfort of the barzakh. Give him the cushions of Jannah and give him the libas of Jannah. Okay, you put something on the soul and show him his house in Jannah. So the person will have his grave made vast, his grave as large as he can see, and a portal will open up, and that portal will be facing his house in Jannah. And he will see his house in Jannah, and he will smell the fragrance of Jannah, and he will hear the sounds of Jannah. And so he will say, O oh Allah, hasten judgment day, make it quick so that I can enter this house. And as he's waiting there, a very handsome entity comes that is bright, that is wearing good garments, that has good clothes. And that entity will say, I've come to give you glad tidings. Rejoice and be happy for this is the day you were promised. The man will say, and who are you? For by Allah, you are nothing but good. Your presence is good. Your face is good. You are bringing good news. And so he will say, I am your good deeds coming back to you. So your good deeds will take on a form that will bring you happiness, will give companionship to you in the grave. And that person will then continue to make dua to Allah. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, This is what Allah says in the Quran. Allah thabbata means to make firm. Allah comforts and makes firm. Allah gives thabat to the people who believe. With what? thabit. With the firm statement in this world and in the next world. What is al qawl thabit? Our scholars said, al qawl thabit is in this world. You say, La ilaha illallah at the time of death. May Allah make our last kalima to be La ilaha illallah at the time of death. And in the next world, when Munkar and Nakir come, you answer these questions. Who gives you the confidence to answer when you've just been returned to the Qabr? Allah gives you that confidence. 